Sup, ladies and gentlemen, Akalon here, and of course, welcome back to each and every one of you. In today's video, we're taking a look at the final warning of Zuval, where he told us that there is something big coming, and that a divided universe will not be able to stand against it. We're going to be looking also at what led to the initial fall of Zuval, him specifically turning his back on the purpose, and then also speculate about the possibility of Zuval existing again. Considering in Zeroth Mortis we do know that other versions of the Eternal Ones exist, it kind of makes sense. There could be another Zuval at some point. So what exactly are the laws and the rules that govern these things? I think I speak for many people. When I say, the lore of Shadowlands was less than stellar. For a lot of people, it was very bad. And of course, there are people that really loved it. I'd love to know, actually. Let me know in the comment section down below if you actually love the lore or maybe you found it a little bit less than stellar or lacking in some way. But Zuval was attributed to be complicit in a lot of events throughout the history of World of Warcraft. And for a lot of people, myself included, a lot of those events were almost diminished in their importance and their significance due to Zuval's involvement. In order to do a very quick recap, Zuval is an eternal one. He used to be the arbiter of the Shadowlands. At some point, Zuval saw something, and this is my own speculation on it. I believe that Zuval saw something through the millions upon millions of souls that cross over his threshold every single day. One of those souls revealed an enemy so dire that it threatened the very structure of the purpose by which the Shadowlands is governed. So let's examine this purpose. The purpose isn't really described or explained in a lot of detail, but looking at how the Shadowlands operates, one can extrapolate from there what the original purpose is. Now, the purpose is very much spoken about in Oribos by the attendants, just paying attention to the Shadowlands. The Shadowlands may not involve itself in the events of the Great Beyond. The Shadowlands should at all times manage the souls that cross over from the Great Beyond, but insofar as anything that happens on the side of the Great Beyond, this is of no regard to the Shadowlands and the denizens of the Shadowlands. The only time we know of where the Shadowlands took action was with the Burning Legion, and one could argue that this specific moment was the Shadowlands more trying to gauge whether or not they should be worried. Obviously, Zuval saw something, something that threatens this. It seems like whatever Zuval saw spurred him to action. He suddenly realized that it is not enough for us just to guard the souls of the Great Beyond. We have to interfere with the mechanisms of the Great Beyond, because if we do not, an enemy will arise so powerful that it will probably defeat us at the same time. Now, this is where we sort of get into the mix of two speculation theories. Because on the face of it, one can simply believe Zuval. When the Nathrezim told Sargeras about the void, the Nathrezim, of course, serving Denathrius, Denathrius serving Zuval. Now, Denathrius being afraid of the void, telling his Nathrezim to tell Sargeras that the void is the real problem is the obvious threat. Zuval saw the void and realized that the void cannot be stopped. If the void were ever to escape the boundaries of their own realm, it would be devastation and everything would be destroyed as a result of this. I'm not entirely sure what I make of this theory, especially considering in Oribos, we learn that they don't really think much of the void or of the light, but for anyone that brings that up, there is also the immediate, well, it, it does come from a Kyrian who's been brainwashed to basically only know the Shadowlands. There is another option, though. It is possible that Zuval used the one threat that he knew Sargeras would fall for. In other words, while Zuval's true intentions and the true enemy in his mind wasn't the void, he knew that he could never convince Sargeras of the true enemy. So this would suggest that either the enemy was so obscure that Sargeras would question the very existence of said enemy, me? Or the enemy was so close to the Titans that Sargeras would never have believed it. I'm not entirely sure which one of the two it is, but I will venture a guess. 
To my mind, there are potentially two threats that could fit this bill. The first being the light. The light is an obvious enemy within our universe, and before people lose their minds in the comment section again, when I say enemy, I don't actually mean evil, because I don't think that any cosmological power is in and of itself evil. Good and evil are very much human emotions, and it is human feelings that we put on certain actions. For godlike beings, good and evil makes no sense. It's sort of the same thing as us stepping on ants. You don't really think about the thousands or millions of ants that you kill every single year just whilst walking, and this would be our great beyond in regards to the powers of the light. The light isn't evil, but the light is so much bigger. If we were ever to stand against the goals of the light, the light would be just as happy to eradicate us from the face of Azeroth. It could be that Zuval saw this, and very specifically one of the reasons I extrapolate the possibility of the light, it's his domination, his tactic through which he wishes to save the galaxy. Through domination, he can ensure that everyone thinks in one specific way. Wouldn't this be true for the Void as well? It would absolutely be. The Void uses whispers the same way that the Light uses their battering rams of basically indoctrination. Two methods of mind control, very similar outcomes, very different approaches. So still, I, I, I would forgive you for thinking, well, Akalon, that doesn't prove much. All right, you might be right, but what about this? Every single champion Zuval has ever chosen have been a user of of the light. And I immediately hear people in the comment section going, um, Akalon, actually, Nurzul wasn't of the light, he was a shaman. And to that, I would say, Zuval never chose Nurzul. Nurzul was chosen by Sargeras. Sargeras didn't trust uh, Zuval entirely. This is why when Sargeras created the Lich King, it was the Nathrezim, by the way, that gave him the Helm of Domination, as well as Frostmourne, he decided not to give Nurzul a body. So he wanted the Lich King in order to open the way for the Burning Legion to arrive on Azeroth, but he never wanted the Lich King to be able to run rampant. Sargeras sets out, he creates the Lich King following the orders of Zuval, and after that, Zuval chooses Arthas, a young paladin, servant of the light. When Arthas fell, it was Bolvar that was prepared to become the next Lich King. And make no mistake, Bolvar was indeed prepared. We know that Arthas had Bolvar tortured and trained, if one will, to take his place. It's as if Zuval always knew that he would fall and he hoped that Bolvar would be ready by the time he did. So it could be that Arthas fell too quickly and that Bolvar just by happenstance, took the throne, not yet fully prepared, but at least the Helm of Domination was still doing what the Helm of Domination needed to do. There is that brilliant lie. There must always be a Lich King, which isn't entirely true, but never mind. We'll just go with it, I guess. Two users of the light, both corrupted by Zuval. And then, of course, Anduin. After using the light inside the Maw, Zuval is convinced. This is my champion. He's been searching for someone. You could say Akalon, okay, but that still doesn't prove the light or the void, because it could be both. Then there is the third option. His issue is not with the light or the void, but rather with the child of the light and the void, the twisting nether. It could be that Zuval saw chaos as the ultimate threat. The threat that no one can control, mainly because it is a machine of destruction with no real clear end. It would have been impossible for him to convince Sargeras that the Twisting Nether is any real threat. Sargeras have fought demons for a long time and the demons present no clear threat to him or to anyone else. We know that the Void and the Light is incredibly powerful against the Twisting Nether, specifically the Light, since it can create sacred ground on which the Twisting Nether scarcely can step. Whichever one of the three it is, my reasoning for sort of leaning very heavily into the Twisting Nether, and I realize this is a speculation theory with no real backing whatsoever, and I ask you to forgive me that, but domination is the opposite of chaos. It is the creation of absolute order through an army that is nigh 
unconquerable with leaders and generals that can raise the dead as soon as they fall. In other words, the unimaginable numbers of the twisting nether versus the never-ending numbers of the dead, ensuring domination against complete chaos. Control versus chaos. To me, it makes the most sense, mainly because it's the least likely. It's the one that isn't really being hinted at. Blizzard have provided many links for the Void being the ultimate enemy. Blizzard have provided many links for the Light being the ultimate enemy, but almost no links for the Twisting Nether, the Foul, the Chaos, the Demons to be the ultimate enemy enemy. But consider where the demons make their home, the Twisting Nether. This is an army that can be reborn at will consistently. Consider that the Twisting Nether is the perfect realm for staging an offensive. It is the one place where you can spend thousands of years planning without running out of time. And we know that both the Light and the Void fear the foul. Now, I don't need to tell you. When the light and the void fear something, hates something so much, that it expands and suspends all hostility in the face of it, it stands to reason that that thing should be feared. Now, of course, you will have your own theories, and I would love to hear about them in the comment section down below. Which do you think is the ultimate evil? Finally, I will end this video talking ever so slightly on the possibility of a new Zuval. To my mind, this is not only plausible, but absolutely possible. The Xerath realms create. It is what they do. They seem to be creating off of some kind of blueprint. What exactly that blueprint is, I do not know. The fact that there are other versions of the Eternal Ones suggests that Eternal Ones are consistently created and recreated until perfected. And I do believe that at some point, a new Zuval, a different Zuval will be created, one that is meant to change the way of the previous. I don't know exactly, but I do think that it is absolutely possible for another Zuval to be created at some point. Now I can also see the flip side of that. There is the possibility that since they now have a new Arbiter, one that isn't an eternal one, but nevertheless is now the Arbiter, there is no reason for Zuval's existence, and is it possible that the Xerath Mortis realms do not create anything that would be wasted? Do we even know what governs the creation processes of the Xerath Mortis realms? What decides what gets created and when? None of these answers I can provide you because none of these answers I know, and I don't think anyone really knows them, but they are a lot of them fun to think about. So ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the speculation theory. If you listen and you thought, you know what, Aklon, you have a point, man. I love what you have to say. Please remember to hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button and smash the bell. It does about the channel quite a ton. For those of you that wish to support the channel a little bit more closely, you can do so by joining us over on Patreon, becoming a YouTube member or a Twitch sub. Any and all support is always very much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, be kind to each other, be good to each other, and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace out, fam.